Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. All right, so we are still preparing for that uh, final maths exam. So if you have not subscribed, hey, uncle is busy dishing out some good nuggets when it comes to maths in this case. All right, so let's quickly have a look at this question. So I took this question from um, the 2018 exam and it's a really, really interesting question. So they say to us, we've got a graph that is g of x, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx, which is a cubic function, right? Uh, it has a y-intercept of zero, okay? And um, the x-coordinates of the turning point are negative one and two. All right, now let's quickly have a look at it. Now they say to us, for which values of x will g increase? Now, note in this case, when we look at an increasing function, okay, so, um, all right, let me just take a color there. Uh, remember that we always assume that we are going towards the right-hand side, right? So, we're always going towards the right. So, do you agree with me that between that point negative 1 and x is negative 2, our graph continues to increase as we go towards the right. So remember, every time they ask us these type of questions, your assumption should, should, should always be that we are moving uh, from the left going towards the right. Now, our graph is increasing, right? Between x is negative 1 and x is uh, 2. So you can say as an answer there, x would be an element of negative 1 and we are excluding that because at negative 1 the graph is not increasing right uh, and also uh, at 2 the graph is not increasing or if you want to put it in inequality form you can say x is greater than negative 1 and less than 2 all right so that is how you would uh, look at that um, question right now let's quickly uh, go to the next one so they say to us, we've got, they say write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection of g, right? So let me just zoom out of the question. Right, now I want you to note when we talk about the uh, x coordinate of the point of inflection, so to find the point of inflection, uh, inflection, we usually take the double derivative and make it equal to zero. But I also want you to note that it is the midpoint of the x coordinates in this case of your y value, right? I mean, of your uh, turning points, right? So we can say, right, for 8.2, um, that x value would be minus 1 plus 2 all over 2 so that we get the midpoint, right? And you get a value of 1 over 2. So that would be the x value of your point of inflection okay right so the next question they say for which values of x will g be concave down so if you look at this graph firstly it starts as a concave up graph right until the point of inflection so we've just found out that the point of inflection is at 1 over 2. So what does that mean? From the point of inflection all the way till infinity, our graph starts becoming concave down, right? So we are simply going to say at that point, so for 8.3, we know that it will be x is an element of 1 over 2 all the way till infinity or if you wanted to write it in another form you can say x is greater than 1 over 2 right so remember that our point in, of inflection is uh, either the maximum or the minimum point um, or rather it's the point of maximum gradient in this case so uh, in in this case we know that uh, we are, we are going to ex exclude that point, right? All right, so that's from a half to infinity. Right, now let's go on to the next question. 
8.4. All right, 8.4 point, oh, well, 8.4. Now they say to us, for which values of x, uh, no, actually I'm reading 8.3 again. If g dash x is minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12, determine the, uh, the equation of g. So they said um, the derivative okay is minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12 right that's what they gave us there right so now we are looking for the value of g uh, um, g of x now please remember what you do to get g of x and please i want you to remember this ladies and gents Right? Remember, we always will add 1. So in this case, I'm going to, we subtract 1 when we are deriving, right? And now we are going to reverse that process and add 1. So this becomes x cubed, right? 2 plus 1, that's 3. But now the coefficient that we have must be divided by the number, the sum that we just had uh, just now when we added one, so this will be divided by three, okay? Right, so you add one and you divide by that uh, result there. Right, let's do the same here. So we'll have six, now we're going to add one, so that's six x squared, and now we take that sum and we divide by it, right? That's divided by two, and we're going to do the same. Remember, this is the same as x to the exponent zero, right? So uh, we add 1, okay, and so 0 plus 1 gives us 1, and so divide by 1. So this will be 12x, right, over 1. But please remember, guys, to always say plus d, right? Because remember, when you are deriving, when you've got a constant term, that constant term will usually just uh, fall off, right? So in this case... Um, how do you get the value of d? d will be the x co I mean the, the y-intercept in this case, right? So as a result, uh, our equation is going to be minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12x. But remember, they told us that the graph passes through the origin, right? So that means our y-intercept is zero, right? My x is zero, y is zero. So in this case, it means that our d-value would be zero. So that means, in this case, this is going to be our g of x. All right, I hope that makes sense, uh, guys. Moving on to the next question, 8.5, actually. This was 8.4, right? So they say to us, determine the equation of the tangent to G, right? That is a maximum gradient, okay? Write down uh, your answer in the form Y is equal to MX plus C. Now, I want you to please remember this. What are we trying to maximize? We're trying to maximize the gradient. And what is the equation of the gradient? The equation of the gradient is the derivative, right? So in this case, it means that we're trying to maximize g dash x. Okay, there's g dash x plus 12, right? So we're trying to maximize the gradient. But where is the gradient maximum? Remember, it's at the point of inflection, isn't it? Or you can say, because we're trying to maximize the gradient, it means I need to take the derivative of the derivative and make it equal to zero. Remember, whenever we want to maximize something, we take the derivative and make it equal to zero, right? So this will be g double dash of x is equal to zero, right? So what's our derivative? So that's going to be minus 12 of x plus 6, and this would be equal to 0. Minus 12x is equal to negative 6, okay? And if we divide both sides by negative 12, 
we get a value of x is equal to 1 over 2. Now, I want you guys to note, isn't this our point of inflection? It exactly is, right? So that means our maximum gradient will be where at the point where x is equal to a half. Now, how do we find the gradient? Okay, we are simply going to uh, substitute that x is equal to a half to the equation of the gradient, and that's the derivative. So which means we want the derivative at x is a half, okay? So that will give us minus 6 into a half squared plus 6 times a half plus 12, okay? Now let's try to get our calculator in this case. Right, so we've got negative 6 into uh, 1 over 2, right, 1 over 2. Okay, my calculator is doing some really funny stuff. Okay, that's squared uh, plus we've got 6 into 1 over 2. and plus 12 okay and we get a value there of 27 over 2 or you can say 13.5 so that will be 27 over 2 so that's the gradient at the point where x is equal to a half right so which means the equation is y is equal to 27 over 2 x plus c. Now remember, for us to get the full equation, we need the entire point uh, to substitute into this equation. So which means I need the y value where x is equal to a half, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a half into my original equation, right? Remember, this was the derivative, right? So I'm going to say g of 1 over 2, okay? So that became um, our g of x value, or rather uh, equation. That's going to be minus 2 into 1 over 2 cubed plus uh, 3x squared. This is plus 3 into 1 over 2. Uh, what am I doing now? This is plus c. Uh, plus 3 times 1 over 2 squared um, plus this is 12 times 1 over 2. So all we did was to take the equation as it is and we are simply substituting 1 over 2. Right, so uh, what do we get there? All right, uh, this is going to be negative 2 into 1 over 2 um, cubed plus 3 into 1 over 2. Okay, that's squared plus 12 times 1 over 2. All right, uh, I get a value of 6.5, okay, or you can say 13 over 2. Uh, please, if you can, verify these values with me. Okay, so that means that our equation in this case, right, remember, which means we've got a point, and our point is when x is 1 over 2, y is 13 over 2 right? So we need to substitute that point there um, and substitute it into our equation. So y is 27 over 2 x plus c. So I'm going to substitute the points there. When x is 1 over 2, y is 13 over 2. Okay, 
right and uh, in this case I'm just simply going to get the value of C 13 over 2 minus 27 over 4 okay right subtract 27 over 4 right and I get negative 1 over 4 right and that gives me negative 1 over 4 so which means our equation is going to be y is equal to 27 over 2x minus 1 over 4 and that is how we're going to get the equation of the gradient i hope that makes sense ladies and gents right um the equation rather of the tangent all right i hope uh, that was clear enough okay uh, just to quickly go back to the last i mean the first question they asked us for which values of g will the graph increase now please remember another way in which they could have expressed that is to say where f prime x okay so please keep that in mind f prime x would be greater than zero right so remember when we say f prime x we are simply talking about the gradient and in this case where the gradient is greater than zero which means it's an increasing function okay that's between negative one and two all right ladies and gents i want to keep it there i hope you understood and enjoyed the question right i'll keep dishing out these questions uh, here and there okay as we discover them together right and i'll see you guys again next time sharp sharp